Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here, I am exhausted. If you do parkour at my age, take some painkillers. If you're doing database validation for the data that you get back, bring predators. I don't know what I'm doing. Programming, gaming, fitness, Jesse Warden. To validate data in Mongo, although it's an unstructured database, a lot of people treat it with some semblance of structure. They'll send a bunch of JSON objects in a series of structures. So restaurants, for example, all restaurants look the same. They all have the same properties. People even go insofar as using TypeScript, a certain JS for runtime assertions, and Mongoose to have some semblance of schema around that. But it's not going to help them at runtime when it breaks. And it's also not going to tell them exactly why it broke and what constraints weren't really made. Mongoose has got some great runtime exceptions for that. But I'm going to teach you how to create your own so you can identify, all right, if I'm getting data back from this particular query that we use all the time, did it work or not? In the land of exceptions and explosions, you want to feel safe. So I'm going to teach you how to feel safe. We're going to use some pretty nasty JSON. It's an SNS topic blob that you get from Amazon. If you think of SNS as the way everything in Amazon communicates, lambdas, servers, alerts, load balancers, anything and everything in there that wants to send a text message, phone call, or email to somebody else somewhere, they send an SNS topic message. And the ones that we care about are, yo, what time did it happen? What What's the message and what's the subject? Just like an email or a text message. We're gonna parse this guy. We're gonna review the basics real quick. So you remember that you can't use data records because of two things. First off, if data didn't exist, you'd get a runtime exception. This would blow up. Second, if we misspell record, but and data does exist, it still would explode and get null because you don't have anything. So as soon as you start doing dots, it goes boom, bitty, boom. We don't like booms. We like yes or no. Did you work or not? We used get. And we showed you Git in the past. Git is a nice Lodash method that keeps you safe. So if we say records, O can be undefined, not exist, and we're safe. Records, we could fat finger it and misspell it. We'd also be safe. Calling Git records should make you feel comfortable. Is it worth our time? Do you even have records? Is it worth investigating to go into this array right, of records here? So we're going to use has and do it the same way. Without even actually getting at the object and getting data, we're just going to query the object. We're going to say... Does the blob of JSON have a records property and is an array? So if we find it and it's there, does it actually equal an array or is it some other data type? So now we're doing two predicates and they're both safe, but they're still using the built-in short circuit. Starts to get pretty big when you start labeling these things far to the right when you start having a lot of different constraints about your data. The one we really care about deep in this JSON is this thing first. If you don't get this, it's not the type of event you want to care about. You'll get a ton of these. Imagine if you're listening for the same phone that the entire world shares. You're going to get a lot of phone calls that might not be for you. What you want to do is say, all right, hold on. Is this even a phone call? I don't care about text messages or anything else. So we're going to filter this thing right here, event source. Now, normally you'd have to unwind this JSON thing. Heck with that. We're going to go ahead and say, dude, do you even have an event source? We're going to use a magic capability of Git. A nice safe way to dig. It's like, imagine if you could dig straight down to Minecraft and not fall in lava. That's exactly what this method does for JSON structures. Instead of get, we're going to say has, and we're going to start digging. We're going to make it a string, but we're going to write JavaScript. Records out of zero event source. We snagged an object off O. We actually went to the first item in the array. And then we said, by the way, that object that it returns, does it have an event source? This whole thing can explode in our face. And guess what? You're safe. No explosions, no exceptions. Yes or no, that, that that function returns for you. So that's a great way to dig inside of JSON in a safe environment. And we can use that for every single other predicate. Take this event source and I go, yo, does this data even have an event source? We hit save, run no, it says true. So that should make you feel comfortable that even digging deep in this big old mess. But what if we have a var data? It is actually there. It's defined. It's just undefined. Cool, we get a false. And again, all you have to do is fat finger something. So we accidentally forgot the R, for example, run it, and boom, false. So we don't have to worry about it exploding because we mistyped one scary thing. That is how you use the git keyword to not only get this normal projects in a safe environment, how you keep going really far deep. And notice we're not even getting the data. We're just trying to even query it. Say, hey, is there something there worth me spending my time parsing? If not, I'm not gonna even go that route. Using git and has basic objects, not classes. For classes, you want to use either get in or has in. This is a great way to get access to data, make assertions on that data in a safe way and allow you to dig deep inside without having to worry about explosions. Data that you have no idea what it is and where it came from, which is a wonderful thing to do with NoSQL databases when you're validating data at runtime.